so what's up y'all it's your girl bella and i'm back with another video what's good what's good how y'all feeling y'all feeling good great before we jump in make sure you grab your water make sure you grab your tea if you got some wine if you got a shot of tequila we ain't judging bring it have a seat bring your notebook too anybody who knows me knows i'm the astrology friend okay i'm your cosmic cousin but in today's video i really want to talk about astrology how i got into astrology like the backstory if you're watching this video you're just trying to get straight to it right we're trying to get straight to the point we ain't trying to be like we're just trying to do all that talking let's get straight to the point so astrology has always been a tool for me because i grew up as someone who was adopted okay i was adopted at the age of two i always struggled with this sense of self astrology was the tool that helped me realize like you have so many gifts so many talents right it confirmed that for me i didn't go to astrology like i need answers tell me who i am tell me what i should do and some people may use that and it may help them but that's not what i used it for astrology was like confirmation like you're not crazy you are absolutely a talent you are absolutely intelligent astrology is the study of the stars but what people don't understand is astrology isn't some made-up thing that people just do for fun i mean people do it for fun but it's not some made-up thing before religion there was astrology there was the sun the moon and the stars i'm gonna save that video for another time astrology is a tool it's like anything else like numerology you use it as a tool you don't live by it you know what i'm saying you don't just live by it and forget about who you are as a person as a spirit as a soul i know sometimes people may feel like i use astrology as my entire identity but honestly y'all it's all fun and games for me it's fun i am able to look at people and read them because astrology is more about the energy opposed to who you are and that's what i've learned I was ignorant once upon a time. I used to think astrology was like just sun signs. I used to judge people when I was in my early 20s, okay? Not late 20s and not while I'm 30 today. But I used to judge people based on their sun signs. I'll be like, ooh, ooh, you a Capricorn? Mm. As I've gotten older and obviously more self-aware, more experiences, more studying, okay? The more I've learned more about astrology, I've expanded my mindset. Instead of using it, as like some conversation started i actually started using it in my life and how i show up and just so y'all know i do offer readings now they're called empowerment readings and it combines my study of astrology and spiritual healing okay and in that reading you get a three-page document i made this from scratch you will never find another reading like this i kid you not and if you get in be like oh i found somebody with a similar reading tag me tell me and i'm gonna contact that person straight up the first page just tells you what the reading is about the second page is the actual reading and then the third page is a screenshot it's called an empowerment screenshot and it basically shows you how you can utilize that reading in real time how you can heal your nervous system how you can tap into your goddess energy how you can make life more simple my readings aren't just a whole bunch of blah and information for you to just take and be like okay great what do i do now <laughs> The earliest memory I have when it came to astrology was going to the diners with my father. We would go to a diner like on a Sunday and he would have a newspaper. And in that newspaper, they would have astrology. You will look for your birthday. I didn't really know what the signs were back then, but it would say like Sagittarius, November this through December this. And obviously my birthday is November 24th. And I was always curious. I was a curious child by nature. So when i started reading those more and more i'm like oh okay another early memory i remember is b2k b2k for life do y'all remember b2k what a girl wants remember in the song like at the end he was like what's up ladies it's a marion and i'm a scorpio and i know exactly what a girl wants and when i saw that video i said a scorpio i need one of them I need one of them. And yeah, just from there, I just started doing like my own research about it. And then as I got older, you know, in college, then I started learning about the sun signs and reading more about the characteristics of each sign. Now, me personally, 
I never just judge people solely off of what I read. I'm big on experience. I'm big on, okay, I know this says this, but what has been my experience with it, right? I never want to just judge something based on what I read. I want to have the full experience. So I will be around people. I, I was around Leo's. Leo's was one sign that I was like, okay, because the guy I was dating back then was a Leo. My brother was a Leo. My best friend back then was a Leo. My twin, who's like a sister to me, she's a Leo. Like I had so many Leos, but they were so different, but they had similar characteristics, leadership qualities. Felt like they knew everything. That was my first introduction into, into a sign that I had a lot of experiences with. And I realized my mom was a Sagittarius. And I was like, okay, me and you are both Sagittarius, but we do not act alike. I was more like sensitive. My mama was more like, <laughs> what? So I was like, why is it that me and my mama don't? That's when I started learning about moon signs. Then when I started working in different spots, you know, I became a server. And then I realized a lot of the girls I was working with were also interested in astrology. And we, we used to just kiki about astrology and talk about our least favorite signs, you know. So my journey with astrology has really been like the experience opposed to just me reading stuff. Every job I had, I was known for astrology or asking people about their sun signs or explaining to them what it means. And I love that. Like, I feel like that's how I have bonded a lot with people. It's people being like, okay, so this guy I'm dating, he a Virgo. And I'm like, girl, run, run. So yeah, and then I had an experience where I dated an air sign. I dated an Aquarius. It was the worst experience of my life. Like they're great friends, but they're horrible partners. Like if, especially if they're less evolved. Before I even dated that Aquarius, women would tell me like, don't date Aquariuses. Like they're psychopaths. And I was like, like anybody could be a psychopath, which is the truth. Anybody could be a psychopath. It doesn't matter what your sign is. Um, and then I dated one and then I was like, hmm, you guys were right. And <laughs> 2019 was when I had got my first full natal chart reading. I paid like $200 for it. This is when I had just got out of an abusive relationship. This was the first time I started hearing about the midheaven, the North Node. So when she was talking about how I grew up, things I've experienced. I was shook and I had a notebook. I remember writing everything down. That's when I started Googling midheaven, what that meant. And I started really paying more attention to the natal chart instead of just like your sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising sign. I started paying more attention to your Mercury, your Venus. When I got that reading, it opened up a door for me. It made me step more into my power as an intuitive, as a clear audience. And it made me embrace more of my qualities. There's been things that I've already known about myself that astrology just kind of confirmed for me. Like, I love self-development. And yes, does your environment make a difference as well? Absolutely. And that's what I want people to understand about astrology. Astrology isn't telling you who you are. Instead of looking at it as like, oh, you're this or you act like that, look at it from an energetic perspective. You have the energy of this sign. We have the energy of all of the signs, right? But when you utilize certain planets, certain houses, and it can amplify the space, it can amplify the energy of what you're already working with if you use those placements and aspects. Does that make sense? I don't know if you guys understand, but like we're made out of water. I think 80% water. I could be wrong. But our body is made out of water. The tides turn at night. When the moon hits the water, the tides turn. That is why when the moon is always transitioning, we may feel different ways and we may not understand. It's because of that energy within us. And that's my thing. People are so quick to dismiss something because they don't understand it, because they don't read. And that's my biggest problem with people. Y'all read stuff on the internet and you're quick to believe it. But you won't read a book on the history of it, on how it originated. One thing about me, <laughs> I must speak the truth. That's one thing they say about Sagittarius too. Truth speakers. I'm going to show you guys how to use astrology in real time. If you look at your birth chart right now, if you look at your Mercury sign, the way I use Mercury is how to 
regulate my nervous system. So when I look at Mercury, right, Mercury is the planet of communication. Mercury is the planet of self-expression. It rules over technology, travel, journaling, writing, your nervous system. When I get in spaces, I tend to be very quiet because a lot of the times I tend to think about stuff more on a subconscious level. I think about things that are hidden, things people really don't talk about. I like to talk about spirituality, divination, nature. So if I'm in spaces and people are talking about the Kardashians, I have nothing to say to that. If you're talking about reality TV, don't get me wrong, I watch reality TV sometimes, but when I'm in groups, that's not something I want to talk about. So a lot of the times I'll be quiet because I just don't feel like this is a safe space for me to express myself how I naturally am. So the way I regulate my nervous system is being in safe spaces where my intensity doesn't come off as being angry. I was having a conversation with somebody about who's the best dancer. And we were talking about Sierra and Beyonce. And the other person said that Beyonce is a performer. She's not a dancer. And I wanted to understand the reason why she thought that. I want to understand the underlying reasons, not just the surface level reason because you're just trying to disagree with me, but why do you really feel that way? And because I asked that question, she instantly felt bothered, like was like, because that's what I said. And I was just like, ooh, like, so I didn't feel safe in that space to have a conversation. So let's say you're a Leo Mercury, right? You feel safe in spaces where you can be loud and proud about what you're saying, where you feel confident. You don't feel safe in spaces where people try to shrink your voice and make you quiet because it makes them feel better. You regulate your nervous system by being in safe spaces where you feel heard. Okay, book me if you want to figure out how you can regulate your nervous system. I'm telling y'all, I don't use astrology like regular people use astrology. Another placement that I use in real life is my Chiron. Your Chiron placement is considered the wounded healer. This is where you find your trauma, your wounds. Once you see what your wounds are and you're allowed to make that into a strength, that is when like your power ignites whenever i feel those wounds tapping on my shoulder like hey remember you're insecure about that remember you can't do this you can't do this i'll be like wait a minute i remember my chiron placement these are the exact wounds that i experience so instead of me feeling all down about it i take that as a strength and i i flip that you know we all go through life feeling like our wounds are a weakness right the things we experience like make us damage goods that's not the case you can take your chiron placement baby and make that your superpower take your wounds and make them what you thought this was two more things so two more placements so if you're looking for a brand identity say you're a content creator you're a speaker you're a writer but you're looking for a brand you're having a hard time gaining clarity understanding how you should brand yourself look at your midheaven i'm a pisces midheaven okay pisces midheaven usually go in careers go into spiritual careers and i've always even like back in my old videos y'all saw i talk about feeling different what self-love really meant the spiritual aspects of that i've always been really in tune with spirituality with self-development with raising consciousness in this lifetime on this planet and even like the branding because pisces the colors for pisces is like pastel colors and i love pastel colors i love black but i love purples i love blues i love pinks and i love yellow so if you're looking for a way to show up on social media look at your midheaven placement look at colors that are associated with that with your midheaven astrology sign and experiment Okay, see if it works. The last placement that I use is my Venus placement. This is how you can tap into your goddess energy, okay? You know, when I talk about goddess energy, goddess energy is about tapping into your authenticity, self-acceptance. With me, I have a Venus in Capricorn. So I wear, when I go out, I wear dark colors. Like I wear um, black, I wear brown. I may wear like a maroon, dark purple because... I want colors that communicate maturity. I want colors that communicate mystery. Go on your chart, look at what your Venus sign is, and look at the colors, then Google the colors that are associated with that sign, and then wear those colors. Y'all, if my video looks dark, I'm sorry. My phone died, I had to charge it, it took a while, and 
the light that I did have is gone. So I often ask people what their Venus sign is because it often gives a glimpse into how they like to be shown love. Astrology should be used as a tool to amplify the energy in your life. It's, it shouldn't be used to decide how you live your life. It should be used as literal cheat codes. Like, how can I utilize this energy? How can I utilize the energy in my career, in my business, in my relationships, in my life? How can I make life easier? Because the system is set up for me to fail. So how can I use this map? And astrology has been here before religion. The sun, the moon, the stars, okay? It's not about being limited to what you can do. You can do whatever you set your mind to. You can use this energy to amplify the essence of your life and make it fun, make life fun. Like you have some direction, you have more clarity. That is what you are programmed to believe, that you have to hustle and bustle and do all of this hard work and start hunching your back like this so then you start talking like this hi my name is ingrid and i've been working here for 40 years do you want to be ingrid no don't be ingrid ingrid didn't believe in herself ingrid didn't experiment okay i'm not here to convince you anything all i'm saying is astrology is just a cheat code how to utilize the energy in your life. But don't forget that I offer empowerment. I'm sorry, that's the only way I can like. Don't forget that I offer empowerment readings, y'all, okay? Go to the link in my bio. And then also my readings, I'm, I'm big on authenticity. I don't wanna sound super structured, but I also want to give you the advice and the the good source of energy that you need to help move you forward. You will never find a reading like this. You won't because <laughs> you will never find a woman like me. <laughs> I'll talk to y'all later. <laughs>